Most leaders step out when they shoot, step in, and step in when they shoot, step out. Are you ready for some abnormalities? At this moment, only 15% of all people, all employees, are fully passionate in their jobs. 77% is not happy in their jobs. One in five employees left their jobs in the Netherlands last year, and another one third is trying to do so. What's happening? Is this the new normal? Let's explore, let's explain, and solve these organizational problems in just 50 minutes. Are you ready to go with me on this journey? I always need only one thing, and that is my flip over. I will try to explain, explore, and solve this problem in only three steps, in three models. Model number one. I once was a law student, and I found the study of law difficult, but also rather easy. Why was it that easy? Because there was a structure involved. Book law, number one, is family law. Number two is company law. Number three, contract law. And so you've got all these books, and you know where to start and how to finish. Business administration, organizational studies, is so much more fun, but it's rather hard because there is no structure. There's only one word involved, and that is alignment. Today I will give you the six books of law in organizational studies. Are you ready to explore? Let's start. I will give law book, book of organization studies, number one, and that is called leadership. Number two, it's called work motivation. Number three, performance results. Number four, strategy. Number five, culture. Number six, organizational structures. Six books in organizational structure organizational studies that are all important for just one thing. What is our main task as a, as a leader? Our main task in nature, the main task in our families, it's all about continuity. It's all about sustainable performance. All those variables are important. But there is only one variable, the most important. We've got professors for every variable on this paper. But still, there is only one, the most important. It, at the end, it's all about this one. It's all about our employees. It's all about ourselves. It's all about our colleagues. It's all about work motivation. That can be made and broken by leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Leadership follows strategy, directly affects work motivation, etc., etc. Which one is the, mo is the least important to your opinion? And most organizations, most leaders use that one to solve their problems. The least important, in my opinion, is organizational structures. It's all about your employees, your colleagues and yourself have to do the jobs. And still, most organizations use this one to solve their problems. There are no self-leading teams. Why not? Because every space needs its borders. We leaders have two jobs to take care of. One is safety, the most important one is safety, and the second one is results, performance. At the end, there has to be a leader to solve and to maintain safety. Otherwise, it will be chaos. It's your job as a leader to maintain safety. Second one, results. Your most important variable is not in your schemes, it's not in your books, it's not in your profit and loss. It's all about work motivation and you know the numbers. A lot of companies, a lot of leaders use job satisfaction surveys to have an idea about the work motivation of their workforce. And probably most of your organization do as well. So my first question to you is, stop doing so. Stop having those job satisfaction surveys. Why? Because there is a reason we need arguments in a university like ours. Job satisfaction says nothing about today, it says something about the past. I'm not interested in the past, I know the past. And the bar is not high enough. 
Some organizations use commitment. But you can be committed on four aspects. You can be committed to your job. Look in healthcare. Look in education. I'm totally committed to my job. You can be committed to your colleagues. I work as a family together with these people. You can be committed to the organization. Mwah, I don't care so much. And you can be committed to your leader. Most leaders get a number, a grade, that isn't very high today. Why so? Because most leaders step in when they should step out, and step out when they should step in. Step number two, why is the work motivation in the Netherlands, and I must say, in the Western world, so low? We don't use job satisfaction, we don't use commitment, we use today the highest form, the best definition of work motivation. And the best definition of work motivation is to be passionate, to have a high level of work motivation. And what is then work engagement different than commitment? It is the activation grade of commitment. I'm not only committed, but I'm passionate. I'm fully engaged, and I'm being characteristic by three elements, vitality, dedication, and absorption. Vitality, dedication, absorption. You all have a clue about vitality and dedication, but what could absorption be? At this moment, you've got a high level of absorption. And we will continue doing so at least for another seven minutes. But what is it? What is absorption? The first thing I look at, at my colleagues, at myself, at people I meet, how about their absorption levels? Knowledge was a possession, was an asset. Absorption is an attitude. An attitude to learn as much as you can to become a better leader, a better professional, to improve yourself, and not only yourself, but your team and your organization every day. Leadership is a job and not a position. Try to improve yourself every day. Today we will have a story, a model number two. How about the level of passion in the Netherlands? Why is it that low? Only 15% is fully passionate. How does that come? Let's explore, let's explain. My mentor was Paul de Blot, a professor of business spirituality, and he always said to me, Bas, every answer can be gained from nature. Who is being chosen in groups of animals, in times of turbulence, fear, uncertainties, as their leader? The alpha, the silverback. But who is being chosen in the same times of uncertainties, fears, turbulence, in animal groups of elephants, giraffes, especially in the Netherlands, wolves? Who's chosen in those groups of animals in times of turbulence, fear, uncertainties? It's a different one. And that's the oldest woman. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in times that the female style of leadership is the most appropriate. Leadership styles with elements of feedback, coaching, attention, appreciation. A little step out. Let's step in. If you feel fears and uncertainties, do your needs for control grow or diminish? They grow. Again, a positive correlation. If I would be your leader, if you as a leader would control your employees, your colleagues, more and more, do their levels of passion grow or diminish? They diminish a negative correlation. If the most important variable in your organization diminished overnight, fiercely, do the results, the performance of the organization and their teams grow or diminish? They indeed diminish performance results, and we call that again a positive correlation. Higher levels of passion, higher levels of performance. And then we almost have created our own model. 
if the levels of performance and results in your teams, in your organization, in your households, diminish overnight, fall back to the lowest points, does turbulence grow or diminish? And of course, it grows a negative correlation. And this, ladies and gentlemen, in 90% of all organizations happens today in the Western world, especially here in the Netherlands, we leaders destroy our own organization. Most leaders step in when they should step out and step out when they should step in. We all got three triggers at hand. We've got fears, we've got ego, and we've got too much of empathy. Why are leaders being chosen to become a leader? Because we performed in the past. And we now are expected to perform again in the future. So this is a pitfall. The second pitfall is empathy. We are known to have a, a lot of empathy for our colleagues. But the only goal we've got is to grow problem-solving skills, self-efficacy, and results. And my most important job is to maintain safety, security. If you lose your most important job, you will lose everything. So learn to confront, learn to deal with dilemmas. When to step in and when to step out. When do you step in? On confrontations. We have to keep borders. Look for norms and values. Look for your principles. Look for your abnormalities. We are not equal. We are being looked and standardized as equal persons. We are not equal. We are equally worthy. Everybody's got talents. You've got unique experience, unique skills to solve in a different way, the same position, the same task, in a different manner. Every one of you here has a unique style of leadership, a preferent style of leadership. But me so sorry, in most cases, the situation prefers a different one. When you've got employees, a team at hand, I use a model. Leading professional is the opposite of raising children. Model number three. Who of you have got children at the year of, at the age of five, six? And for the other people, imagine. If you've got small children, five, six years old, you've got only one style of leadership at hand. We call that one the director style of leadership. Eat your plate, brush your teeth, go to school. If they can choose for themselves, they wouldn't do so. You have to direct them. Your children will grow to become youngsters, 15, 60 years old, and then you can use a different style of leadership. Namely, you can coach them. Hey, look at this university, look at this school, look at this city. But it's your life. You have to choose. They study, become older, 25, 26, and they start their own jobs. And maybe you even look to buy a house. At that moment, you can facilitate them with a second mortgage. And at the end of your life, you become old and older. You're 80 years old, and your children, 50, 60 years old, they come and visit you to have a cup of coffee and a cake and tell you, hey, Dad, I want another prize. I got another promotion, and you don't have any clue how they did it. Fantastic. Please, you did so. Next time, even better. The style of leadership you can use at that moment is to support, not to help, but to applaud. Well done. My applause. Next time, even better. The highest form of leadership, I will tell you now. The most difficult style of leadership to have but also the nicest one to use is this one, letting others lead. A difficult one because you have to control your triggers, your fears, your ego, and your too much of empathy. Leading professionals is the opposite of raising your children. How to start leading your professionals? Lead from behind, lead as a wolf. Letting others lead, use your skill, to absorb problem-solving skills, 
their self-efficacy, their performance. You start here. It's all about them. Let them swim, almost sink. If results are not at the highest levels possible, then you have to step in as a leader. We need your results. We need you as a team member. Most leaders don't control the triggers and step to the other side of the road and start to direct, do this, do that. The second worst style of leadership is the directive style of leadership. What is number one worst style of leadership? We call that one laissez-faire. To ignore safety, to ignore bad results, to ignore the self-efficacy and problem solving skills of your colleagues, of your employees. Control your triggers. Step in only one step. First one, facilitating. Hey, we need your performance. How can I facilitate you to maintain your results in the near future? If this one doesn't work, then start coaching. Look at this, look at that, but it's your job, it's your role, you have to decide. If this doesn't work, then start directing. We need your results. If this one doesn't work, <laughs> there is a way out. Embrace abnormalities in your teams. We are not equal. Don't standardize your people. Embrace the abnormalities. Embrace your own abnormalities. Embrace yourself. Thank you so much for having me.